Y'all, there are definitely some mixed emotions about the new windowing feature in iPad OS 26. This update came with some big changes and it definitely caused a little confusion. So let's go over everything you need to know about this multitasking feature on the iPad. All right, so let's start off with the settings. After you install the update, you'll get a prompt to pick the multitasking feature you want. From here, you wanna make sure you select the windowing option, but if you didn't, don't worry, there's another way to do it. The first thing you want to do is go to settings and then select multitasking gestures. This is where you're going to find your three options for the windowing. The first option is going to be your full screen apps. This is the old way that we were doing it, where you look at the one full screen app at a time. The only thing is the slide over and split screen view are not available for this option anymore. Now, when you open the app, the three dots at the top have been removed and you can't drag apps from the dock to put it in the split screen view. All right, next is windowing mode. And this is the new option with all the good stuff that most of us want to use. This is going to allow you to open multiple windows for apps that you're using in windows, sort of like you're using a laptop. The last option is Stage Manager. Stage Manager is still available for all compatible iPads. This feature allows you to group your apps together so you can quickly search between the sets of apps. The option that we'll be using is the windowing, so make sure that's turned on. All right, now let's get into how you actually use the windowing feature. When you open an app for the first time, by default, it's gonna go full screen. Now, if this is an app that you had open before, it will open in the same place and the same size that you had it in when you closed it. And to resize your app or your windows, you can use any of the four corners to make it bigger or smaller. When you resize these windows, they can go as small as the iPhone app or they can stretch as big as the full screen. And with the windowing feature, you can move your apps anywhere on the screen. Just hold along the top bar and you can move them anywhere you want to place them. And did you know with this new windowing feature, you can have two windows of the same app open at once? I've only tried this with the Apple apps like Notes and Safari, but it's definitely a feature I use all the time on my computer. It's so much better than having to bounce back and forth in Notes and on tabs in Safari. Now, there are a few ways that you can open multiple windows for the same app, like two Notes windows. Just drag the first window to the right or the left of the screen and select the app and the plus sign will appear in the top left to add another window. All right, let's say you want two Safari windows open. You can open one and then from your dock you can drag the second window up and it'll open another window. You can also open a new window by long holding on the app and in the pop-up menu select new window. You can also open a new window by long holding on the app and in the pop-up menu select new window. And lastly, and this is probably the easiest way to do it, you can hold on any app in your dock and select add window from the pop-up menu. This will open multiple windows for the apps that you want to use. And if you have multiple windows open for an app, this pop-up menu will also show you at the top all of your open windows. You can also select show all windows from the menu option and it'll show you all the windows on the screen that you have open currently. Quick, let's talk about the keyboards. You can still use your full and minimized keyboards with this windowing feature. To minimize the keyboard, you can pinch in on the keyboard or you can hold on the keyboard key on the keyboard and select floating. Now, the way you move the keyboard around has changed. You're going to want to move it around by the bottom, like right there where those three dots are at the bottom. If you hold your pencil or your finger down in this area, you'll be able to move your keyboard around the screen. And to get back to the full keyboard, you can pinch out on this keyboard or you can hold on those three dots at the bottom and it'll give you back your full keyboard. Y'all, we got some new hand gestures with this update. If you flick a window up, it'll open it full screen. And when you flick it down, it'll minimize it. When you have multiple windows open on the screen, you can swipe up to get back to your home screen. And if you swipe up again, it'll close the open windows out. And y'all, we still have the split screen option. It's just not the way we used to get to it before. Just flick the windows that you wanna use to the right and left of your screen, and it'll put you back in split view. And if you hold on the two windows in the middle of the screen, you'll get the bar for the slider over feature. If you ask me, this is an upgrade from the split view that we we're using before because now you can add extra apps on top of this so you can really multitask and take your productivity to another level because you're not restricted to just the two apps. If you have multiple windows open, you can swipe up and hold and you'll view all the windows that you have currently open. This is called the expose mode.
From here, you can see all the windows that you have open. And if you have any window that you have open and you wanna bring it to the front, you can select it here and it'll bring that app forward for you to work on. You can also swipe up on any app from here and it'll close the app out. And now we have a floating menu bar. Anytime you need to access the menu bar, just swipe down from the top of the screen. Now your menu bar is gonna be a typical menu bar with options like file and edit, you know, just the regular stuff that's on a menu bar. But it also will have shortcuts depending on the app that you're currently using. And with this update, we now have stoplight controls. This is what you'll use to manage your windows. On the full screen, they'll be at the left side of your menu bar. Any other time, it'll be in the left corner of your window. You can just hover over over the stoplight to make them bigger and accessible. The green is what you'll use to go between your windows and full screen. Your yellow will minimize your apps and the red will completely close out the apps. Now, if you long hold on any of the controls in the stoplight, you can get a few more tiling options. This includes a quick access to the side-by-side -side feature, top and bottom, four corners, and three columns. Y'all, our docs got a small upgrade too. Now you can add up to 29 apps to your doc. And if you wanna add additional apps to your doc, all you have to do is long hold on the screen to put it in edit mode and then drag whatever apps you wanna add to the doc and it'll add them in. You can even decide the order that you wanna add them to. Just place it wherever you want or you can slide the app up and down the doc to place it where you wanna place it. I definitely suggest taking advantage of this and adding any apps that you frequently use to your doc, making it easier to access for your windowing features. And speaking of easy access, you can now add file folders that you use to your doc to get to them easier. Just open the files app and long hold on the folder you wanna add. At the bottom of the pop-up menu, there's an options to add to. And from here, you can add the folders to your doc. You can also long hold on the folder and drag it to the doc, which means no more having to filter through your files app to get to the folders that you use on a daily basis. And when you select the file on the doc, the documents on the inside will fan out so you can easily access them. And if you wanna remove a folder from your doc just long hold on it and select options and then remove from doc and lastly let's talk about a few ways that you can customize the new pointer that finally got an upgrade from that little dot if you go to settings and accessibility and choose pointer control you have a few options to customize your pointer here you can change the pointer size and make it bigger so it's easier to see especially if you're presenting or sharing your screen with someone else so they can easily follow along you can increase the contrast and this makes the pointer darker and easier for you to see on the screen now you can also add a color outline to your pointer the options here aren't a lot but it does give you a little color that you can add to it to customize your pointer a little bit and you have the option to keep your pointer visible by turning off the auto hide feature. This keeps your pointer from disappearing while you're working. That's all the tips that I have for today. Hopefully this was helpful and will help you with the multitasking feature on the iPad. If you have any questions, leave them below. Also, if you have any additional tips, make sure to leave those too. All right, y'all, till next time.